vast portions of the planet are on fire. Fire behavior is unprecedented. Every year is worse than the last. Why? All official sources refuse to or are unable to offer any valid explanation for the increasingly catastrophic fires and fire behavior. Why not? Every single person that I've talked to so far has made the mention that I don't know why it's doing what it's doing. It's burning differently. It's burning uh, more aggressive um, than, than it has in years past. And I know we say that every year, but it, it's, it's unprecedented. It's burning in every direction all at the same time. What is actually the core causal factor that is fueling the unprecedented wildfires and fire behavior? Are global climate engineering operations part of this equation? Has the horizon we collectively face become so unimaginably dire and the powers who manipulate it so insane that the answers to some questions are far too horrific to face for the vast majority, including nearly the whole of the science community? The short answer is yes. We are now in completely uncharted territory, all of us. Abrupt climate collapse is not just coming, it's here now and will accelerate rapidly, with global climate engineering operations continuing to make it exponentially worse, not better. All life is now in the balance. Those who wield global power have long since known such a dark hour would come. They have long since known that militarized, industrialized society and the damage it inflicts on the environment and climate would eventually kill us all if allowed to continue. Not only did the power structure and the climate engineers hold to their course of planetary omnicide in the desperate attempt to preserve and expand their grip on power until the last possible moment, but they, the power elite, have doubled down on their desperation to a degree that can scarcely be comprehended. Wildfires are being facilitated and utilized as a form of geoengineering to temporarily cool portions of the planet by filling our skies with sun-blocking smoke particles. I will back up this extremely dire, fact-based conclusion in this video. How concerned are U.S. military leaders about the unfolding climate collapse? They have long since stated on the record that they consider climate change to be the greatest national security threat of all. Question in regard to the climate collapse threat. Are we to believe those who run the military industrial complex are actually concerned about the population? Or rather, are those in power only concerned about maintaining their hegemonic power and control until the brutal bitter end. Does that question even need to be answered? The statement shown by recently deceased presidential advisor Zygmunt Brzezinski should be deeply considered. Climate engineering, geoengineering, solar radiation management programs are the single greatest causal factor that is fueling unprecedented global wildfires. Frontline data confirms this conclusion. Ground-based ionosphere heater installations are a core part of the geoengineering climate manipulation operations. These massively powerful microwave transmission facilities can and are being used to heat the upper atmosphere and subsequently to steer upper level wind currents, thus to steer precipitation and weather patterns. The near constant, quote, ridiculously resilient ridge of high pressure over the western North American continent is the result of ionosphere heater created and maintained high pressure domes. The constant high-pressure ridge in the U.S. West has ensured the complete cutting off of desperately needed moisture to the West. Similar ionosphere heater created high-pressure heat domes have also repeatedly baked portions of Europe and the world. Scandinavian countries were not spared from the ionosphere heater induced high-pressure heat domes. Record heat, record drought, and record wildfires were yet again the result. The constant climate engineered grid pattern spraying over our oceans is further disrupting the global hydrological cycle. Geoengineering over the oceans is extreme, relentless, and is another major factor that is cutting off precipitation where it is desperately needed. In regard to the impacts of global climate engineering, science publications almost always use words like could, may, and might. To be clear, the reality is this. Climate engineering has derailed the planet's climate and weather systems at an ever-escalating rate for over 70 years. 
There is no room for words like could, may, or might. The catastrophic fires are not just an unintended consequence of climate engineering. They are now, in fact, part of the geoengineering desperation. As abrupt climate collapse accelerates exponentially, climate engineering operations have been used to set the stage for wildfires of unprecedented size and intensity. Again, why? What core agenda is being carried out? Wildfire smoke has a temporary cooling effect on the planet due to the sun blocking particulates that saturate the atmosphere. This is exactly the goal of solar radiation management operations known as SRM. The SRM programs are utilizing jet sprayed aerosol dispersions to block some of the sun's incoming thermal energy at unimaginable cost to the planet and the web of life as a whole. Is the intentional incineration of forests the final option of unimaginably desperate power structures all around the world? Frontline data indicates the answer to this dire question is yes. Global powers are using climate engineering to create conditions that facilitate selective and systematic forest incineration in the desperate attempt to temporarily cool selective portions of the planet by loading the atmosphere with sun blocking smoke particulates. It is important to understand and consider that global climate engineering solar radiation management programs involve the constant cooperation of governments all over the world, whether actively or passively. Almost all governments are involved, with few exceptions. Ongoing global climate engineering solar radiation management programs are completely disrupting the global hydrological cycle, causing record droughts and record deluges are destroying the ozone layer, which is allowing lethal levels of UV radiation to reach the surface of the planet, including UVC radiation, are completely contaminating the biosphere from the clouds to the ground with highly toxic heavy metals, polymers, and chemicals. Peer-reviewed study proves that some of these elements, like aluminum and barium, have very negative effects on root systems, causing trees and crops to reduce or stop nutrient uptake. Climate engineering programs are contributing to extreme global tree foliage and crop die-off, a result of factors already cited. Geoengineering programs are creating exponentially more dry lightning strikes due to the atmospheric saturation of the electrically conductive climate engineering elements, which also act as desiccants that further dry out forests and foliage. And finally, geoengineering programs are greatly contributing to the fire intensity and volatility due to the fallout of climate engineering elements like aluminum and barium which are incendiaries. This incendiary dust settles down through the atmosphere coating virtually everything on Earth's surface. When enough extreme wildfires are burning and expanding, the fires then, in and of themselves, become a form of climate engineering as they fill the atmosphere with sun blocking smoke particulates. If you don't believe those in power could be this insane, please, please examine historical facts and current frontline data. Objective investigation is not just an option, it is an absolute obligation. It is our responsibility. The aircraft flight tracker images shown were captured on July 20th and July 21st of 2018, just days before the start of the catastrophic car fire in Shasta County, California. This capture reveals the extremely anomalous flight paths of two separate aircraft over the Reading area. Again, here is the question that is at the core of this report. Does the smoke from wildfires actually cool the planet temporarily? The science consensus on this question is clear and not disputed. The answer is yes. Ongoing science study from multiple sources continues to confirm the short-term large-scale cooling effects of atmospheric smoke particles from extreme wildfires. The climate engineers are, in fact, facilitating the incineration of huge swaths of forest in a desperate and unimaginably destructive attempt to temporarily cool some parts of the planet by creating a scenario that is comparable to a volcanic winter effect. Those in power and the agencies they control, including corporate media, are doing their best to condition the population into accepting continued scheduled 
planetary burn down scenarios as being to some degree part of a natural cycle. This could not be further from the truth. There is nothing natural about the climate on a completely geoengineered planet. The extreme weather whiplash scenarios will continue to worsen rapidly as the climate collapse unfolds, being further fueled by the ongoing and expanding climate engineering operations. This most recent National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration departure from normal high temperature map shown is shocking and revealing. The scenario climate engineers have scheduled is a complete reversal of the previous month's extremes. Now that the atmosphere has been saturated with enough particulates to temporarily cool desired regions, the North American West is scheduled for an extreme cool down scenario. The Eastern US is slated for record high temperatures. Climate engineering will continue to fuel and worsen extreme weather whiplash scenarios. The climate engineers are also constantly utilizing patented processes of chemical ice nucleation to create short-term, highly toxic and destructive weather whiplash cooldowns. They can do this only where there is enough moisture to do so. Increasingly extreme hail is a harbinger of chemical ice nucleation elements being utilized for such short-term cooldowns. Search geoengineeringwatch.org chemical ice nucleation for more data on this aspect of climate engineering. Weather forecasting scripts designed to prepare the public for the coming scheduled weather changes are already being disseminated. It is important to remember that all weather modeling for the National Weather Service and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is done by private defense contractor and geoengineering patent holder Raytheon. It is also important to remember and consider that there is an illegal federal gag order on all National Weather Service and all National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration employees, the nation's weathermen, illegal federal gag order. Are the climate engineers actually desperate enough to fuel forest fires in order to saturate the atmosphere with sun blocking particulates? Again, an unimaginably desperate attempt to temporarily cool the planet. Question, does any rational individual that is to any degree familiar with the level of insanity that runs the world and has run the world, believe that those in power are not insane enough to do this? For any that are willing to face the full truth head on, the answer is clear, yes. Yes, those in power would absolutely incinerate and destroy huge parts of the world in order to mask the full degree of unfolding biosphere collapse and thus to maintain their power till the last possible moment. Numerous science reports and studies, past and present, confirm the conclusions of this video report. The climate engineers need to generate the hottest possible fires in order to push the smoke particulates as high as possible into the atmosphere, which allows the particulates to migrate maximum distances and thus have the maximum duration cooling effect. In regard to the runaway climate collapse that is unfolding on planet Earth, the rapidly thawing methane deposits in the polar regions pose the greatest threat of all. Methane deposits are thawing and in many cases virtually exploding into the atmosphere. Why does this present such a dire threat? Because methane is an extremely potent heat trapping gas. Methane is over 100 times more efficient at trapping heat than is CO2 over a 10 year time horizon. And there are enough methane deposits in the Arctic alone to turn our planet into a scorched, lifeless rock resembling Venus, a hundred times over. For decades, those in power have been trying to hide this unfolding scenario from populations with covert climate engineering operations, which paradoxically are actually fueling the overall planetary meltdown. Geoengineering is fueling Venus syndrome. This term is not a metaphor, rather it is a recognized scientific scenario. Geoengineering is creating short-term highly toxic and destructive cooldowns at the cost of an even worse overall warming. Again, 
Are the climate engineers willing to incinerate much of the planet's forests in order to temporarily cool the Arctic and other regions? Again, the answer is yes. Wildfire smoke from high latitude firestorms can and has temporarily cooled the Arctic at the cost of making the overall long-term warming worse. Atmospheric aerosols from smoke that has been generated from anthropogenic or human-caused wildfires becomes a form of solar radiation management, which again is a form of geoengineering. But again, we must ask, at what cost to the environment and the web of life has this temporary cooling come? Smoke from extreme fires in Siberia had already begun covering the Arctic skies in the summer of 2018, even before the latest round of Western North American wildfires had exploded. Peer-reviewed science study confirms the temporary cooling effect of wildfire smoke in the Arctic. Though many will choose to believe, quote, those in power would never do this to themselves. History says otherwise. The excerpt shown is from a peer-reviewed science study that specifically addresses the cooling effect of wildfire smoke. This study unambiguously states that there is, quote, a significant cooling effect at the surface, end quote. It also states that even a, quote, passing smoke plume would cool the Arctic tundra and the adjacent ocean. Further, this profoundly important statement is made in the science report. Again, quote, should this effect occur, the cooling effect from wildfire smoke, should this effect occur with some frequency over broad spatial scales, the Arctic climate could be modulated in important ways. How revealing is that statement? Question, is it just a coincidence that the science study cited a moment ago was published a month after the 2008 California firestorms, which immediately followed an extreme level of jet aircraft atmospheric aerosol spraying operations throughout the state of California. The heavily aerosolized skies, which are far more electrically conductive, facilitated some 8,000 dry lightning strikes, which started over 800 wildfires. For the record, the unprecedented firestorms of 2008 followed record-shattering low levels of Arctic ice in 2007. Was the California firestorm experiment nothing less than geoengineering solar radiation management desperation? An experiment to temporarily slow the planetary meltdown at unimaginable cost to the planet as a whole? How much material can a single large wildfire expel and emit into the atmosphere? The excerpt shown from an example science study provides a stunning example. In the case of the fire studied, over 5 million metric tons of total pollutants were expelled into the atmosphere, 46,000 tons of which were particulates. How much landmass can and have the current wildfire smoke particulates actually covered? This atmospheric smoke aerosol map provides shocking input. This NASA satellite image clearly reveals immense wildfire smoke plumes covering much of the North American continent. Global geoengineering operations are creating conditions that allow the weather makers to utilize the incineration of forests in order to load the atmosphere with sun blocking particulates. The price the planet has and is paying for this unimaginably destructive form of climate mitigation cannot be quantified and is not reversible in any time frame that matters. We will never again know the once thriving planet we had. Frontline data on the true degree of polar ice disintegration is being systematically hidden and manipulated. As I have covered in this report, unimaginably insane and omnicidal climate engineering operations are also being used to mask the polar disintegration from public view for as long as possible. But satellite images still tell a very clear story. Such images prove that most of the Arctic, quote, ice pack, looks like the broken ice and slush we see in this NASA satellite image recently taken. We are perilously close to an ice-free Arctic. The ramifications from this are grave and many. As has already been stated 
In the attempt to mask the climate disintegration from the public, the climate engineers have further fueled the overall meltdown and poisoned the entire planet in the process. Over 70 years ago, Global Powers committed us to a climate engineering experiment from which there is no return. Though every form of anthropogenic activity that impacts the energy balance of the planet must be considered, the intentional climate intervention operations are the most destructive of all. Recent frontline reports from the Arctic paint a very clear picture. The poles are imploding. The incredibly short-sighted and destructive agendas of the climate engineers are directly connected to what is unfolding in the polar regions. Geoengineering is also the single greatest factor fueling the catastrophic wildfires. When we lose the Arctic ice, biosphere collapse will go exponential. This world fire map shows shocking clusters of fires burning all over the globe. The gravity and immediacy of what is unfolding on our planet at this moment in time cannot be overstated. The threats we collectively face are existential. Again, though there are countless forms of anthropogenic damage to the planet and biosphere, climate engineering operations are the greatest and most immediate threat we collectively face short of nuclear cataclysm. This is a mathematical fact. The ongoing global firestorms, the conditions for which are a direct result of climate engineering operations, are a case in point. If we are to have any hope of exposing and halting the ongoing climate engineering insanity, the effort will take all of us. Time is not on our side. How can each of us help in this most critical battle? Activist instructions links can be found on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Share credible data from a credible source. Make your voice heard while it can still make a difference. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.